to understand God, Elohim, Yahweh, or Jehovah, I am that I am, whatever you call him, you must understand that God made the world. He made all the things in the world. He made the fish, the birds, the bees, the trees, the horses, the deer. He made everything. You must understand that he made the moon and the sun and all the stars. The wise men said, we've seen his star in the east. So you must understand that God is a spirit and he's all powerful and he knows everything. He's a, he is the great I am. And until you understand this, you will not understand Jesus going down to the river of Jordan and John baptizing him in the water. That was to his death. He was going to die for the faith. But the Holy Ghost came down upon him. And he received the Holy Ghost without measure. And when Jesus would speak, he would say, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus would come forth. But you take that today in literature, and you speak it, and nothing happens. Because he spoke with the Spirit. You must understand this. There's two things you've got to understand. Flesh and spirit. A man went forth to soul. Tares came up, that was flesh. Wheat come up, that was spirit. Now, what is not you that speak, listen to what I'm telling you. It's not you that speak, but the spirit of your Father which speaks in you. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you become one with God. When Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost, he said, all full of all subtlety and mischief, you child of the devil, will you never cease to pervert the right ways of God? And he said, now the hand of God is upon you, and you will not see the sun for a season. And he was blinded. Why was Paul speaking by? He was speaking out of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And today, the words that Jesus speaks is life. But the word that's in literature, and the words in buildings, and words in, in natural people, that's not life. They don't have no faith. This video is called God Speaking. So when God was speaking to those people, people back in history, it was his word. It was a living word. It was his spirit and the words that he spoke. But when you take those same words recorded in history and another person is speaking them and they're not speaking by the Holy Spirit, then it is their spirit speaking them, not God's spirit. So it becomes their word, their interpretation. It's not the word of God, his spirit speaking through it. And in John, he said, it is the spirit that quickens. That means it gives you life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And so Jesus was speaking words of life. One time, a long time ago, many years ago, I went to a little meeting and um, this man prophesied to me. And it was really the Spirit speaking to me because he said some things that only the Spirit knew because this person didn't know me. This preacher had never seen me before. And the Lord was prophesying to me through him because he didn't have anyone else to prophesy through. And it was a beautiful prophecy. It was a prophecy of encouragement. And I also saw Jesus in a vision at that time. And afterwards, this other woman came up to me, and she said, Oh, what a beautiful prophecy. She said, I claim that prophecy for myself. You know, the Bible says we can do that. But what she was doing was trying to steal the words of the prophet. The Spirit spoke to me. He didn't speak to her. So you have to get what the Spirit is speaking to you and through people to you. It's what God says to you. It's not what God said to somebody else. And here's a true thing. Jesus says, I know that his commandments is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Now think about this. I was hated by all people. I was going around my little 60 by 40 tent all over America and I was preaching. And I met a pumpkin out there in Arizona. I was from Virginia. And I told her the word of God, and it went down in her. 
Well, she came out there where I was at, and I was preaching to some little churches and had a little tent. I didn't have them. Everybody hated me. But I was praying. I said, Lord, this little girl has left her family and, and left her life behind and everything. And she loves your, she loves your word of truth. And I said, what am I going to do with her? <laughs> and he said, marry her. Mm. And I thought, <laughs> Jesus had really went nuts. That's his wig. <laughs> I said, I can't marry her. She's younger than I am and everything. And listen, go by what he tells you. That's right. That's been 42 years ago. That's right. And this nut is still with me <laughs> after all these years. And she loves Jesus with all of her heart. That's right. In Acts, they said, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That was the Holy Spirit speaking through them. It wasn't literature speaking through them. They weren't speaking what somebody else had spoken. They were speaking what God in them was speaking. When I was out in the desert in the West, I had been through a lot of religious churches and people and things, and but I couldn't find this feeling in those churches, the feeling of God. He said, search, seek after him, lest happily you should find him. With your feelings, you feel after him. And I was praying in this old canal or ditch that it, you know, the earth had taken back over. It was getting filled in, but it was out on the desert. And I was praying, Lord, where are you? I can't find you. Where are your people? And in the back of the mind, my conscious mind was saying, you're crazy. This big city out here in the West is full of hundreds of churches. But I couldn't find the Holy Spirit, the real living God, in those churches. And so I was out there praying in that. And then many years later, I had a dream. And in this dream, there were some people, Indian people, Native Americans, and they were praying, Hohokam, Hohokam. They were praying to the living God with their heart, and I felt that. And then I googled it, <laughs> and I found out that the Hohokam people were a tribe of Indian, Native Americans that had vanished. They said the people that are no more, because somehow or another they had got wiped out. But that's what happened to real Holy Spirit-filled Christians. Where are your people, Lord? And in the Spirit, I didn't know it, but I was actually praying in a canal that those people had built years and years and years ago for the living God. Now, albeit when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Let me tell you a little mystery. I've been around a long time. I'm 82 years old. And I've been following Jesus since I was a little bit boy. Here is a great mystery. People lay up treasures on earth. You, all you've got to remember is two things when you hear me speaking. is spirit or flesh. That's right. If you're living in the spirit, you do all right. If you're living after the flesh, you lay up your treasures on earth. You know what happens to you? And I've seen this over and over and over. And you've got to understand this. People will come like to me like you just seen Doris Day die and Tim Conway die, they go back to their home. They come by me and ask me to help them. Because, you see, they laid up their treasures on the earth. You see what I'm saying? People don't know the spirit until they die. When you leave your body, you're in the spirit. And do you know, I have to tell them that they're dead. Most of them don't even know they're dead. And you don't understand the spirit. I'm speaking spirits of words, of truth, and life. Jesus come to give his life so we could be back in the spirit. You see, all the angels and all of the, the kingdom of God is controlled by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And he says, you that has an ear must hear what the spirit says. So when you pop out of your body and you go into the spirit world, you know what you're going to see? You're going to see billions. Of spirits. How many people do you think is dead that's lived on the earth? There's about 8 billion people on the earth now, but there's been billions and billions and billions of people died. You can go to Gettysburg and still see some of them soldiers fighting it out. 
You can go to some of these haunted houses and you'll see them spirits. I've seen Mormon preachers in, hit out in buildings. They go back home. They don't understand the spirit world. You must be redeemed. You must be regenerated. You must be translated, transformed, and be born again, they call it, and have the spirit of God in you. You become one with God. When Stephen's died, he said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. When people die, I've seen them die, and they come to me, help me. I said, I could help you when you're on earth in the flesh. I could teach you to not live after the flesh, but live after the spirit. But you've laid up all your treasures on earth. Do you know where they return to? Their, their treasures. treasures on earth. <laughs> if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. That means he lets God speak through him orally. It's God speaking through him, the oracles of God, not the oracles of literature. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability of God, which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Let God speak through you. Don't let literature speak through you. The Lord, I was praying about what to share on this video and the Lord told me to share this you know in the garden Lucifer brought us down we're made in the image of God in our inner man in our spiritual being in our soul and we had the mind of God a heavenly mind but Lucifer brought Adam's mind down into a mind of the flesh after the flesh and so he corrupted the seed and all the seed after him, which is everybody on the earth, were made mindful of the flesh. And so the Lord was showing me we're not to be subject to the flesh. We weren't created to be subject to the flesh. But Lucifer made us subject to the flesh so that he could control us. Adam was given dominion over all the animals on the earth, all the flesh on the earth. And Satan had to make us like the animals so that he could control us and have dominion over us. But the flesh is to be subject to us through the Holy Spirit. We're not to be subject to the flesh. Satan made us subject to the flesh. But through the Holy Spirit, we can have make the flesh subject to us. Now, your flesh has needs, and we're sold into sin, and so our flesh will desire the things that are of the flesh. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, if you've been regenerated, if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, then you do not have to do the deeds, the lustful deeds of the flesh. Now, God will provide the needs of your flesh. You know, you have need of shelter and food and clothing and a spouse. Most people do. And he will provide those needs, but not your lust. And you don't have to do the lust of the flesh. We have power over that through the Holy Spirit. So remember that. If you want to read about one of the apostles in history that understood this, in Romans chapter 7, he spoke of it. He said, the things that I do not allow, those things I do, and the things that I do allow, those things do I not. What he was talking about is the flesh wants to do fleshly things, but the spirit wants to do heavenly things. So be heavenly minded, understand that you live in a flesh body, and you must control it through the Holy Spirit for the needs, but you do not fulfill the lust of the spirit of the flesh. You live after the Spirit. Remember that, children, and you will have a much better life. So she speaks a mystery. The mystery is you can live in the flesh, but you don't live after the flesh. And here's something that you must understand that's very, very important. And this brother's much wiser than me that said these things. I'm mostly a witness. But he said Satan is transformed into an angel of light. See, he emulates Jesus Christ. He couldn't beat Jesus. He couldn't beat the resurrection and the whole power of the Holy Ghost. So he had to join in he, because he couldn't, conquer, he couldn't conquer that. Now listen real close. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So get that. You'll never hear a preacher on earth preach chapter 10 
of revelations. They just won't preach it. They won't touch it. I'm the only one that will touch it. And I teach things that is crazy. See, nobody, and I mean nobody on earth, can resist the powers today because Satan has formed everything up in the flesh. And you have to have your religion today in the flesh. And I've suffered so many things because I worship in the Spirit. I know God. I know Jesus Christ. I've talked to Him. He's told me many things. And He's done many things. I've suffered the loss of all things because I keep His Word. His Word is Spirit and His Word is life. And so I want to tell you this truth that happened to me in 1977. It's been 42 years ago. On May the 17th, and this is the 15th, this is on the 17th, I was praying in my camper outside. I had a little 60 by 40 tent in Fitzgerald, Georgia. And I knelt down by a little couch I had there in my camper. And the only reason I remember the date of it was because I had a calendar in, in the, the camper. I never remembered the dates of all the things he spoke to me about these couple of times because I had that calendar in it. And I fell like a dead man. It was like a wet wash rag. I just fell out. And I was called away in a vision. And I see a tunnel. A tunnel opened up in heaven. And you've heard of talk, dead people talk about going through this tunnel. I didn't go up through the tunnel. But Jesus was speaking to me down through the tunnel. And I knew his voice. I'd heard his voice before. And over there was a bunch of preachers. A.A. Allen. And uh, oh, uh, Graham was in there. And a bunch of them was in there. And... Uh, I was telling them, I said, why didn't you do this while you was on earth? You had big ministers, you could have told people this, and they could have worshipped God in the Spirit. But you know what they was listening for? They was listening for that voice that came down to me. And I'm one of the few men on earth that hears the voice of God today. They go by literature. And you know what he told me the first day on the 17th? He said, the sons of God will be manifested. And you're seeing it right now. Right now, you're seeing the Son of God. Speaking the Word of God. I'm not a, under the allegiance to any man or anything. Only to God. And them men over there, A.A.L. and all the preachers, William Brown and all of them, they was gathered in a little circle. They didn't want to hear me talking. They felt so bad. Oh, if you could realize how bad they was. They had gone into the spirit world. Now, they was in the spirit were great preachers that had preached all over America and different parts of the world, made millions of dollars, and they wasn't with Jesus. They had not heard the voice of Jesus. See, they had preached literature. They had not preached. And then on the 19th, I was doing the same thing, praying for a message for my tent meeting. And I fell out again like a dead man. My arm was like a wet wash rag. You know what he told me that day? And I seen the same people over and I was telling them, I said, why didn't you preach this when you was on earth with all your big ministries and casting out devils and healing the sick and preaching the gospel? Why didn't you tell them this so they could turn from the power of Satan to the power of God? And you know what he said? He said, my voice will be heard again in the land. And you're hearing it right now. You've got to come to Jesus Christ. And you've got to hear what the Spirit says to the church. You can't go by literature or buildings or religion. You've got to go by Jesus Christ who raised from death. This cut them people over there. They thought when they died, they going to be walking on streets of gold. They just listened to what he's telling me. They should have been listening to what Jesus told them in the first place. They don't listen to what Jesus tells them today. They know. They have knowledge. You don't serve God with knowledge. You serve God with the Spirit. When the Spirit told Peter to go to Cornelius' house, he didn't want to go. He didn't want to go because it was Gentile. When he went, he didn't have no liberty. He only had the keys to the kingdom of God. That's what he gave Peter and the apostles. He said, he said, flesh and blood's not revealed that to you. But said, my Father revealed that to you. And he said, I give to you the keys to the kingdom. Most people don't know what that means. The 
that means they had power. They could lay hands on people and the Holy Ghost would come upon them. Peter went to Cornelius' house. He had six Jewish men with him. And when he spoke, the Holy Ghost fell on his Gentiles. And the Gentiles, which had not the law, do the things contained in the law by nature. They do it by nature. Then they're law unto themselves. We have what Peter then had. Peter said, why should we put a yoke upon them that our forefathers could not bear? No, we ourselves could not bear. They couldn't keep the law. There's over 600 laws in the Old Testament. You can't keep them all. But with God in you and the seed in you, you can keep them. And I'm a son of God, and I'm telling you this truth, and you must get ready because hard times is coming, and you must be born again of the Spirit of the living God. You come to Jesus, and he will forgive you of your sin. He will fill you with the Holy Ghost, and you will have life everlasting, and you can hear his voice, his sheep know his voice. Your voice will be heard again, Lord. Your voice will be heard again. Light will break forth in the morning to free our soul from within. Your voice will be heard again. Spirit. 